Hello everyone, welcome back, happy new year to you. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm, I'm suffering a little bit, you know, off the, off of Christmas. I'm a little bit throaty, congested. I've got eyes like piss holes in the snow. <laughs> Which is why I haven't even started the engine build video, to be honest. I say video, videos. Uh, and when I first thought about doing the engine build, I thought it was gonna be like what the disassembly was. You know, I just come in the garage, I shut the door and I, I just go for it and whatever happens, happens. If it ends up, you know, like entertaining or informative, it, it is what it is. But I'm gonna try and break it down a little bit more, break it into little videos and, and try and put some detail into it. Because there's a lot of detail goes into it, so there's no reason why not. And then there's the added issue of having to explain it and with this road, that's not gonna happen. So uh, I thought I'd get a couple of jobs out the way though, because I forgot, as you know, from the last video too, uh, get an ALP head stud tool. Uh, I keep telling people I'm a Muppet, but no one ever believes this. <laughs> I genuinely forgot that and I just thought, I'm gonna have to make it, it's as simple as that. And again, going referencing back to the engine disassembly video, yeah, you probably remember that I uh, fashioned a really precise uh, crank, you know, hold pulley tool. A block of wood. Aha! How the hell am I gonna continue building a shed with that now? I mean, it's, it's goose, isn't it? It never made it into the shed in all honesty. <laughs> Which I think some people found that a little bit humorous and to be honest, that's all it was meant to be. I, I could have literally made a crank pulley hole and tool then, but um, I just thought that would be funny. I've used it before and it worked, so rest assured, I'm not gonna be using that again. <laughs> so today, let's uh, sort out the crank pulley hold and tool conundrum. I'm gonna have to make one. So before I fabric cobble something together, I'm going to have to uh, mock up the end of the crank just so I know exactly what I need to make. Um, so this is an 18T crank, I've got an 18T crank pulley and I've also got uh, the crank seal end case in here. So I'll have to put this together so I can measure uh, and then only then will I know what I need. So I've just used some washers there as spacers, just so that the end casing does sit exactly where it should. Uh, if it's sat on this narrow bit, it would be wrong. So now I can fit the pulley. What's that? I think you can see straight away that the pulley actually sits a little bit recessed from the cover. And it looks by eye to be about five mil. About five and a half mil there. So anything I make for this, it has to be able to bolt flat to this pulley, have that cut out, which is, should have planned this, shouldn't I? 30 mil, so that were, I think I've got a 32 mil cutter, so that'll do that bit nicely. There's also the little locating dimple there, so I need to make sure I drill that in. And then on top of that, it also has to be uh, proud by about five, six millish. Hopefully I've got some six mil stock and I can just make some like space up late. Get some angle line on it, something like that. Let's have a look. <laughs> that corner of the gouge is the right tip. Which let's face it, it's probably Spencer's fault, but you know, he's not here so we'll not blame him. I've got this 50 by 30 mil box section, which, which will be good. I think that'll be the, the lever part of it. Be sweet, I'll probably just have to cut that down. And I haven't got any like six mil spacer stock, but I've got this which looks similar ish, probably is a bit smaller. Four mil, four mil. So I might, I might even cut two discs out of that and actually weld them together so it makes one sort of eight mil disc. And that'll probably work out good because in bottom disc, I can cut the little dimple hole there so it sits over nicely I'll probably just like weld them together and then just create a disc for that and then I just need to weld that to the box section and we'll be done <coughs>
So I've now got a nice 8mm donut, which was actually a bit of a matter cut to be honest. And that actually was Spencer's fault. Because the hole saw that I used was his, and it really didn't work that well. I had to finish it off by hand, and that's what happens when you buy your hole saw some little. You know what I mean? So now all I have to do is uh, offer it up to the pulley, mark some holes to drill. I'll get this drilled, and uh, then we'll just get it welded to the bar, and bish bosh bosh, done. crank pulley tool had a certain charm about it but to be fair it didn't come out well did it <laughs> and uh, let's face it I couldn't use that when assembling an engine because I'd get wood in the engine wouldn't I so I'm going to use this instead so this is a bit of 50 by 30 mil box section which I've just lopped the end off and then welded on that spacer donut that's all been drilled out that's a 32 mil hole and then our uh, nine mil holes because the bolts are M8s, so nine mil spot on. And I also drilled a little recess in the little donut itself, which will uh, this little raised bit on the crank pulley that will sit in. And the best part is this one actually works. So it's not going to win us any engineering awards, but. Let's face it, it cost us nothing, it'll do the job and uh, kept us out of mischief for about 45 minutes, something like that. Well actually it did cost us something, it cost us Spencer's crap hole so, but let's face it, we could do without that. Thanks for watching anyway, see you next time.